Tarrant County voters will breathe a sigh of relief tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock when the polls close in that Democratic primary runoff election. For several weeks now, the air has been hot with charges and counter charges. Gutter politics has been the name of the game with most of the action in the Precinct 4 County Commissioner's race between incumbent George Skeet Richardson and hopeful Steve Murray. Both candidates have been accused of dirty politics due to phantom mailings to voters which have been aimed at Steve Murrin primarily. Both candidates deny sending the mailing. In that 10th senatorial district, incumbent Don Kennard faces Representative Joe Shannon, Jr. The exchanges between the candidates have been fiery and at times bitter. In other political contests, Mike Moncrief and Dave Massey are vying for state representative place one. The post is presently held by Mike Moncrief. Joe Spurlock, the second, and Robert L. Bob Strickland for place six, state representative's post. In the Watauga's Justice of Peace Precinct 4 race, it's between Clyde W. Glover and William J. Egner. In addition, there are three runoffs for Democratic Precinct Chairman. This is Art Sinclair, Channel 8 News on the Move, Tarrant County. Actually, these movies are uh, second right to our girls that we have uh, dancing. Well, do you think uh, do you think this is wrong? This crackdown uh, attitude that uh, the law is taking on the so-called obscene literature. Well, really, I have no opinion on it. Uh, we don't really want the movies to be too hardcore. I mean, now that the rulings came up, it's uh, limited to competition, and we can really show what we want to because we don't want the movies to come in competition with the girls. Well, number one, uh, the upholding of it, we've been under a restraining order from Judge Taylor that we couldn't file any charges or try anybody or uh, bring any restraining orders. This will have the effect of relieving us. We have about 30 cases pending now that we'll immediately set down for trial. We'll also have some restraining orders that we've got pending that we'll uh, proceed with. The police now are restrained also. They can go make other cases on uh, pornography, and it'll start with your rawest type of pornography and come on down as we go. Rush into this theater and let us turn on your pleasure machine. Believe us, we know where the switch is. The pleasure machine. They could do anything people could do, only longer and better. Now, there's nothing wrong with those words. They're all in the dictionary, but they weren't necessarily meant to be put together in that order. Does this disturb you? Well, that's one side of the obscenity law. What does and does not constitute obscenity and profanity? This may be objectionable to you, but what about your neighbor? This is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News on the Move. On the sixth floor of the Dallas County Records Building here is located a state welfare agency which may be in trouble. The agency to which I refer is the Child Welfare Division of the State Welfare Organization. In recent months, there have been grumblings among some local officials that Dallas County is being shortchanged on welfare services and money, and a study of the facts and the matter seemed to substantiate the charge. Five years ago, when the county turned child welfare over to the state, the state promised 65 workers in the office here. Five years later, there are only 44 workers in the office, and many of these are performing duties in no way related to child welfare. What really disturbs some local officials is that uh, some of the workers use Dallas County facilities and expense money to drive to Ellis and other counties to perform work they should be doing in Dallas County. And this perhaps would be okay, except there are indications they aren't doing the job in Dallas County. As an example, one disgruntled case worker told me the agency did not process a single child abuse case during one recent one and a half month period. And that wasn't because there were, weren't any cases to be processed. The situation has reached the point that a number of concerned citizens several months ago decided to form an investigating committee and look into the matter. 
The results of that investigation are to be presented to Dallas County Commissioners Monday, and their reaction might be interesting. It is the responsibility of the County Commissioner's Court to provide services for the less fortunate children of this county. One county commissioner I talked to assured me that the county is paying for that service, and he said, uh, one way or another, the county is going to get it. This is Tommy Ayers reporting for Channel 8 News. There is over 189 schools in the Dallas Independent School District and more than 25,000 low-income young people who go to school. Those young people need extra money to buy clothes and school supplies. The Dallas Independent School District last year had a pilot project that directly and indirectly helped those students. Richard Musgrave, the Dallas Independent School District Director of Maintenance, explains. Regardless of what part of town it might be in, there's always ways some boys can use some extra money. What they use it for is their own privilege, of course, but usually when they want to work, they need clothes. Did you hear any complaints from the regular custodians, janitors, and maids? Personally, no. In most cases, we were so short of help, they were real happy to have them. If we heard anything, it was compliments. I feel that there would be a morale factor. If you bring them in and pay them the same amount that you would pay a man that's been working 12 or 15 years for the school. Some students uh, need this money uh, very desperately to stay in school. Would you say that they shouldn't get the money? No, definitely not, I wouldn't say that. I think it, they could probably be a program worked out that would be satisfactory to the school and to the student. But I'm not in favor of giving them equal pay with a man who's been working 12, 15 years. Only 16 schools participated in the program last year. Even with minor objections, the program is valid and there is a need. At the job fair here in Dallas last Tuesday, thousands of students went and begged for a job. Hundreds had to go home jobless. For Channel 8 News on the Move, this is Jess Brown. Uh, John Baker. John, what kind of job do you want this summer? Well, it didn't really make any difference. I just want a summer job. I'm out of college. And what are you going to do with the money? Uh, use it for college, I guess. Okay. Young lady, what's your name? Debbie Baker. Where are you from, Debbie? Burleson. What are you going to do with a summer job? Well, uh, I want to do a mini because I'm going to college in the fall. Where do you plan to go? Brantley Drawn, Business College. Any particular type of job you'd like to have? Yes, an office job, if, if, if I could. 